Hi, I'm Derek Steele, and welcome back to Ask a Dev. Today's question comes from Angel. Angel asks, what is the procedure for testing the back end of a website? Now, this depends on exactly what you mean by the back end. That may include network infrastructure, servers, server software, APIs, or databases. Typically, though, people will use the term back end to refer to databases and how we interact with them, so we'll focus on that today. When testing the properties of data in a database, we refer to the ACID principles. Now, ACID stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Every transaction in your database has to follow these principles. Atomicity means that a transaction can either pass or fail. You can't have partial transactions. Consistency means that your transactions always create a valid state in your database. Isolation means that if there are multiple transactions occurring simultaneously, the state of the database will be the same as though they happened one after the other. And finally, durability. Durability means that once a transaction is complete, no outside factors can change that transaction. We also need to verify data integrity. The values of the data should be consistently displayed across multiple users. Of course, none of this matters if we aren't following the business rules that we've set for our system. Business rules simply refer to the logic of a system and how it's supposed to operate. In any given database, there are going to be constraints, triggers, and stored procedures to follow. Now, when testing a database, you'll need to be familiar with the language the database is written in. This typically means that you're going to need to know SQL. You also need an environment to test in. Make sure that you're testing against the staging environment. Testing in production is a bad idea. Don't do it. When writing your test, you'll need to ensure that transactions are handled properly. This is simply writing a transaction yourself and running it against the database to be tested. You also need to ensure that the transaction was handled properly and that you're able to roll back that same transaction. You can test directly or write some middleware to help. In the past, I've turned to both Python and PHP to write my middleware. Next, you may need to ensure that your database's schema is correct. The schema is simply a definition of how your data is going to be organized. Some example requirements for a schema might include creating primary keys first, indexing of foreign keys, and specific value constraints around certain fields. A tool such as Schema Crawler can help you make sense of a database. Next up, you'll need to test triggers on your database. A trigger is simply a piece of code that is run whenever a specific event occurs. Your test will need to make sure that those triggers occur correctly and in a timely fashion. Similar to triggers, we also have stored procedures. These are functions that can be called within the database and will run some code when called. When invoked, the procedure should return some set of results. You'll need to ensure that those results are as expected and follow the rules that we discussed earlier. You also need to check field constraints. To test this, you'll either create your own framework or use a test tool such as HP's UFT. For example, if a field only supports integers, you might want to throw some emoji at it and see what happens. Provide both empty transactions and very large transactions, and also test for foreign key constraints. If the database is well designed, it should be able to handle these properly. Finally, if you're testing your database's performance, there are a number of tools that can help. Dell offers a database testing suite, but if you're on a budget, I suggest checking out some open source software such as HammerDB. Well, that's it for today's Ask a Dev. If you have any questions, tweet at us with the hashtag AskADev, or leave it in the comments section below.